so in this video tutorial we'll be having a look at four part chords and four part chords is part of the grade four trinity college theory syllabus and we need to know how to write out the tonic subdominant and dominant chords for satb satb stands for soprano alto tenor and bass voices it's actually very very simple so we're going to follow these easy steps. First things first is, let's take for example, we need to write the subdominant chord for C major. So we're going to start first by saying that the tonic of C major is C. And we know that the subdominant of C is F, the fourth degree, and that the subdominant triad is built on degrees 1, 3, and 5, starting on F, F, A, C. So there we have F, A, C, and we have, if we consider F to be the uh, root, then it will be root third and fifth. Now, the next part is to then break these up into the SATB, or the different voices. So the best way of doing this is to double our root note. But we have to be careful and we have to be mindful that certain voices have certain ranges. So I know if I then write my bass notes, if I write my bass note first, um, or my the, the, the note for the bass, I can then write F right there. But now I have to be careful. If I write the notes too low for the tenor, then the alto and soprano notes might struggle a bit. So I'm then going to now write Instead of doubling my root note now first initially here, I'm going to double my root note, but I'm going to double it in for the alto. So I'm going to write my F there, rather than doubling it as an octave in the bass, in the lower regions or the lower registers. My next note then will be an A for the tenors. And then finally, I'm going to have my C for the soprano at the top. There, and there I've successfully written the four-part chord for the subdominant in C major. And it is a subdominant still because we have, we have the F as root note. And this is very important. When we double the root in each case, we have to make sure that the chord is still in root position. So if I accidentally started on A here, it is not in root position. And this, it will be wrong because we are doing these in root position. So, just to give an idea, we have C as the tonic, tri subdominant triad, and then the four-part harmony. Let's now have a look at B minor, and we are going to write the dominant in B minor. The first thing we need to remember is that B minor has a key signature, and the key signature for B minor has two sharps. F sharp and C sharp. So now that we know that, we can now go and say the tonic of B minor is B. So then I'm going to say, okay, so it's B. The dominant goes to B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp. So we're going to start on F sharp and then we're going to build the triad on that F sharp, A, C sharp. And from there, now we are going to write our chord. Now, we're going to start on F, and now we can write, we can double the F, so let's double the F in the bass. For the tenor, we're also going to have an F, followed by the C for the alto, because that is an acceptable, acceptable note to sing for the alto, followed by an A. But, what's wrong here? We have to remember that in a minor scale, the seventh degree is always raised. So when we work with a dominance, especially in minors, we have to remember that we have to raise that seventh degree. The seventh degree of uh, B minor is A, so it's A sharp. So we have to raise that degree there as well. Otherwise, the chord, on, the chord is not going to sound correctly. Tonic, dominant triad. dominant four-part chord. 
Now, I've we've been working uh, in semi-breeze up until now, but when we work with notes such as minims and crotchets, we have to remember that there are four parts of the harmony. And we have to remember that for the bass clef. Say, for example, I'm going to write out a tonic for G minor. So remember, G minor has, an, uh, has a key signature. G minor's key signature has two flats, B flat and E flat. So now we are in G minor. So we have to remember to write that in. If asked you to use key signatures, otherwise without key signatures, we need to actually go and add those flats uh, if necessary. I'm going to write out the four part chord for the tonic in G minor. So I'm going to start. I'm first going to say, okay, G is the tonic of G minor. I have to write out the tonic, so that's easy. So it's going to be G, B flat, D. But I need to write it out in minims. So now my stems need to go in certain directions. The first stem must go down for the bass. So I'm going to write a G first. And now I'm going to double that G. And you can see that for my tenor voice, the stem goes up. Now I'm going to write my D next. And finally, I'm going to write my B. And there I have my four part chord for the tonic of G minor. Let's have a listen. Tonic first. Tonic triad. Four part chord. So there we have a nice balanced chord, far spaced. Remember, we don't always need to write the uh, octave in the bass. It just will depend on how low or how high we will start with our chords so that we don't give notes to certain, uh, certain voice parts that will, won't be able to be sung by the bass or the tenor or the alto or the soprano. It's very, very important as well. Try to play the chord that you write on a keyboard so that you can learn to imagine the sounds when you write it down. And this is also useful, when it, especially when it comes to, your, to, to exams, because in exams you won't be able to go to the piano and play what you hear. You, you're going to have to visualize it and listen to it in your mind. So play through the chords that you write. That's very important, as it will help you to better understand how to write them effectively. If you like this video, please remember to subscribe and check out any other videos that might be useful. Thanks for watching.